your general thoughts on how today went? I thought it was good, you know, that these are uh, designated days in shorts, you know, by rule, but I think they're really good. You know, I think it's a great way to break back in. Uh, and I think that uh, it's a good chance to really teach uh, and slow things down a little bit. Uh, I, I, so I, I think it's a good transition back into football. What kind of conversations did you have with Hunter Jarman about his decision to focus on football? I didn't have much, really. I, you know, I, I uh, had worked out with him a deal where he was going to practice with us when he could and, and then practice with baseball because I didn't want to – I told Pat I didn't want to get in the way of them winning any games. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, we had worked out that kind of an agreement. And then I was frankly surprised that he is now full-time football because I know he was doing real well. And, uh, uh, but it was a personal decision by him. Any uh, initial – thoughts about the wide receiver core so far? I like the looks of the, the wide receivers. We, uh, you know, we look young there now, you know, with uh, without Brandon around and, of course, with losing Marcus, those two guys back-to-back. -back. Uh, so there's big shoes to fill. Uh, looks like we're pretty talented, but we got a long way to go as far as really proving what we can do in the games. Do you think they're feeling the pressure of replacing the, the, filling the shoes of the Brandon Cooks and Marcus Wheaton? Oh, I think that, I don't know if kids think of it as pressure. I think they're excited about the opportunity to do that. I think that when they see somebody firsthand do something like that and have that kind of production, I think it makes them excited about what they might could do. It sounds like you're wanting those guys to learn inside spot and the outside spot. Kind of talk about how you came to that conclusion and what you hope that Well, what we with. decided to do this year, a little differently uh, in the approach with the wide receivers, is teach them all the split end. Everybody learns split end or flanker, you know, what we call X and Z. And then we'll pick some designated guys to be the slot back because we don't always play three wide receivers. As a matter of fact, it is pure 50-50 that we do not play three wide receivers. So if 50% of the game we're in three wides, but the other 50% we just have X and Z in the game, and sometimes just Z. So, you know, we want them all to gain an opportunity. I wish I would have done that with Kevin Cummings. He should have been an X and, uh, and then learn the R, when, and he knew all the positions anyway, so he might not be the best example. Coach, Victor has a full gear under his belt now. Can, I mean, I know it's just the spring, but can you kind of see a difference in him at all in terms of mentally and physically out there so far? I think the, there are both uh, differences in Victor. One of them, physically, he looks stronger and bigger, and then uh, mentally he's really shown his – experience you know as far as the confidence he gained from getting to play in the games so he enters into spring practice as somewhat of a veteran player uh, if if in, you know if nothing more than just the knowledge and attitude that he has done it does it have to go unsaid you know that you expect something you expect more production out of here this year or is that something you talk to him about and you know bring him in and say hey we need this out of you or is it does it go unsaid with a guy like that well, I think that we're looking for every player all the time, and I encourage all of them to be at their best and to do more as they go. You know, I think that uh, it's our job to help them grow and grow in as a player, grow in production, uh, and it's their job to continue to work and grow. So there's no problem with Victor like that. He, he rarely scales it down at all. So we, I, I do expect him to grow. And no, I haven't talked to him specifically about it. We just expect it. You've talked about Obum's switch to, to defense, and kind of just take me through how that process went as far as talking to him and making that choice and, and that sort of thing. Well, you know, I think that the, the talks about position switches normally occur coaching staff meetings. Uh, and, you know, I, I think it's important for a coaching staff to be thoughtful about finding guys a niche to play in the games. Uh, and. And so looking around your team and looking at uh, athleticism and how they might fit if they are not playing much at where they are, what else might they could do? And that's how those discussions kind of get going. And that's what happened with Obum. 
I mean, it was one of those deals where this guy is a big, good athlete that can run. He appears to not be getting in the depth at receiver into the games. We got to get him on the field. Let's find a better opportunity for him. And then, you know, it was, it was one of the easiest transitions I've ever made in a position switch because when I called him in to talk to him, he'd already heard about it and was excited about it. And, and uh, he is such a great worker. I, it, it will not surprise me uh, that, that he does well. What are your early impressions of the kind of retooled offensive line and, and how that's going so far? Well, so far, you know, in shorts against bags or, or scout team, uh, I, I do like the looks of them athletically, and I am impressed with how, how they're doing as far as the pickups of what they need to do, who to block, basically. And, and uh, so I think early development-wise, it's a good picture. Talk about specifically uh, Bobby Keenan and just kind of him already starting it, getting into one of those starting jobs. You know, what do you like about, about him? Well, the reason we recruited uh, Bobby is that we suspected that he would be a good guy to compete for a starting position. You know, having lost three offensive linemen last year for seniors, we needed uh, our young guys to develop. Uh, we needed to recruit some guys, and we needed to recruit junior college guy or two that could maybe help us immediately. And, and uh, so when we recruit a guy like that, we expect that initial competition from him, and, th and then the rest is really up to him. How important is it to have a guy like Isaac, uh, who's had two years starting experience under his belt in the development of the, some of the younger players? Well, I think whenever you can uh, provide experience around your inexperienced players, it's a good thing. And uh, our, our players have always been good mentors to the other guys in their groups in particular, and, and uh, that's what uh, you know, a guy like Isaac uh, can, can bring to that group is a little bit of stability. Do you feel uh, that Mulaney is ready to become the go-to guy? Oh, I think that uh, you know, Richie sh certainly can uh, make a lot of plays, and I don't know that I always look at that. I, I, you know, believe it or not, I look at, at our pass offenses. Every guy is a go-to guy, depending on what the defense says. Right. If the defense says to throw it to him, now there are things that we try to do where we get a guy like Brandon Cooks, we find other ways to make sure that he gets the ball, screen passes or reverses or fly sweeps or whatever it is. Uh, and so, uh, but we, we certainly think that all of our receivers need to amp it up. Everybody needs to increase their production. I doubt anybody's going to catch 128 balls.